I made a mistake. I thought Turkish Airlines was one of the world's best airlines without exception. I was wrong. Sometimes our favorite airlines don't live up to our admittedly high expectations. Listen, I have a tendency to experience the best of something and then question why it isn't as good every other time I do it. This certainly goes for today's flight. I made the horrible mistake of flying Turkish Airlines on a route where I could have flown Emirates, Etihad, Qatar Airways, Oman Air, Gulf Air, and plenty of others instead. With such high competition, I wasn't only underwhelmed, I was disappointed. But why should you care what I say? I'm not Stop Dan. A half Sweden, half American who has been obsessed with airplanes for as long as I can remember. I've flown 150 different airlines, always self-funded. Nothing makes me happier than seeing you guys have an amazing trip after following my advice. So I hope this video helps you with your choices. Turkish Airlines flies to the most countries in the world through its main hub at Istanbul Airport. Their signature product, the one they're most proud of and market, is not available on the vast majority of their routes. I've flown them countless times between Gothenburg and Istanbul, and it's by far the best experience you can get on a flight like that within Europe. Once you start branching out into the Middle East, on the other hand, things look very different. Today, I'm taking a five-hour flight on their 787-9 Dreamliner to put your average Turkish Airlines flight to the test. I've only flown them once on a flight around this length back in April 2021 when I went to Uzbekistan. Naturally, expectations of onboard service were a lot lower back then. Today, removing Europe from the equation, because that's really where Turkish Airlines shines, are they as impressive as I previously thought on their medium haul routes to Central Asia, the Middle East, India, and Central Africa? That is the question. It's another beautiful morning to fly from Dubai. Mornings in the Gulf just have such a unique vibe, especially since it's always the busiest time of day at these mega hubs. I pull up to Terminal 1, the old terminal foreign airlines are condemned to in Dubai, and after clearing immigration and security, I head straight to my gate. Only in the Middle East and Asia does a 787-9 look tiny. The Turkish Airlines 787-9 comes in a two-class configuration with a total of exactly 300 seats with 270 in economy and 30 business class seats spread across eight rows in a one-to-one -one layout. As you'll see, today I'm feeling a renewed sense of bewilderment about how this is a brand new signature business class seat for long-haul travel on Turkish because it's such a dense configuration. Despite that, the seats are private, even more so in the even-numbered rows like my seat 6A. There are some nice little honeymoon seats here in the middle which are great for traveling together and you might as well not bother with a window seat on the Turkish 787 as you'll see shortly. Now welcome on board and welcome to 6A. This is a dark emo cabin for sure. I settle in, look around and remember, oh yeah, this seat is pretty private all things considered. It has these privacy screens which oddly have not been removed in the window seats. That privacy screen remains, I guess for cost saving purposes, blocking half your window view. The seat has just enough storage with this closing compartment which also takes care of your charging needs. You know who doesn't take care of your needs? the Turkish Airlines cabin crew today. They're all looking and acting like someone has just told them they're fired and they'll be evicted from their house to live in a shoebox the second they get back to Istanbul. Okay, back to the seat. It also has a mirror which provides some nice neck stretching opportunities if you want to see yourself in it. Below there is the remote, headphone plug, and seat controls. The tray table comes out in front of you like this, which sadly makes it difficult to use the lavatory while the table is out. Overall though, this is a good seat. It's not somewhere I'd love to spend eight or more hours considering the seats offered by their competition though. I just want to take a moment and pause to say I know everything I'm talking about right now is total first world problems. We're in a cost of living crisis and none of us have any idea what's going on with our money, let alone our investments. That's why I'm so excited to talk about today's video sponsor and my longtime partner, Masterwork, which has already distributed net proceeds from $45 million in sales to people like you. Masterworks gives you access to one of the most unique and sought after luxury assets in the world, namely, 
fine art. Everything from Picasso to Basquiat. Massworks has opened the market, so you don't need millions of dollars to own one of these artworks. You can get a portion of it. And so far, every piece Massworks has sold has generated back a profit to their investors. They already have over 700,000 users. And as I always say, there is a wait list, but if you use my link at the top of the description, you can skip the line and get VIP access. So check it out. Hopefully you find some cool artworks and join me on the platform. Oh, I forgot to show you. This is the most nicely presented thing on this flight, the pre-departure beverage. I love me some Turkish Airlines raspberry juice. Let's take off from Dubai. If only I could enjoy it. Never in close to a thousand flights have I experienced what the crew does next. Two minutes after takeoff, two minutes, they lock every single window in the cabin on blackout. I am horrified. We haven't even retracted our flaps and these guys are plotting to make us all fall asleep. I immediately ding the bell and the purser comes by and I ask him to unlock my window, which to my relief, he does after a few minutes. Unfortunately, it's too late. The whole cabin still has locked windows and they remain that way for the rest of the flight. I can't be the only person letting light in, so I opt for a middle setting as I browse the in-flight menu. Before we all know it, the crew is handing out wonderful scented hot towels, and within a few minutes, they're bringing out breakfast trays left and right. Mine looks oddly familiar, I think, as I chomp down my appetizer for my pre-ordered vegan meal. You'll see why shortly. The drinks are by far the best part, specifically the Turkish coffee with Turkish delight. Can I get a Turkish coffee? Turkish um, coffee? Oh, some Turkish delight on the side. Yeah. Yes, sure. Thank you so much. This is legitimately a good 40% of the reason I love flying with Turkish and it always hits the spot. The main course is served just 10 minutes later. Here's a peek at the regular options from the menu, which looks sad and lonely like the crew. Now it all makes sense. This meal is familiar because I've had it before on this exact same route two years ago in economy class. Yikes. What in the name of cost cutting is going on here? The portion is also half the size of my hand. Okay, I'll deactivate the drama for a minute to say the food is delicious as usual on Turkish, but come on. The presentation, even on a flight this length, is nowhere near their long haul meal presentation. One can dream. <laughs> So far, the in-flight experience has been no different from basically any Turkish Airlines flight within Europe besides this bad boy. Our amenity kit comes to save the day, adding a nice premium touch. It's a pretty nice kit, I gotta say. Another fantastic amenity they provide, and this is really a kicker for me, one gigabyte of free Wi-Fi in business class. Sometimes one gig disappears within minutes on airplanes for some reason, but when Turkish says one gig, they mean it. I'm here browsing about basically the entire flight, and during land, Ending, I still have 40 megabytes left. Nice. If Wi-Fi is not your thing, there is in-flight entertainment with a great selection of shows and movies. It's not huge, but big enough that you'll be satisfied. The headphones are pretty meh, to be honest. One more thing that's meh, unfortunately, is the bed. Don't worry about this blanket that's cosplaying as a napkin. There's better bedding available on request. But the seat is pretty tight, especially around the feet and legs. Luckily, the armrests can be lowered, giving you more space by the shoulders. But again, this is not an industry leading seat. I always feel like Turkish planes are boiling, so I come prepared by bearing layers, but thankfully the Turkish Dreamliner has individual air vents, which keeps the temperature quite pleasant. Just to be clear, this is a fantastic seat for a five hour flight, and this in-flight service is remarkable in the grand scheme of things. It's just that the context and the expectations from a route like this are so different once you head east from Istanbul into the Middle East and Asia. One thing that never changes on Turkish is their molten brown lavatory obsession, which I, in turn, am pretty obsessed with. It smells amazing every time you enter, and the lavatories are kept relatively clean throughout the flight. 
I spend the rest of the flight on the Wi-Fi booking travel and decide to order another Turkish coffee which is served with two Turkish delights this time. How can I not be happy about that? The cabin is pitch black for a good two hours until we start our descent, but most people are still watching movies instead of sleeping, so why did it have to be pitch black? There is no more onboard service whatsoever and no goodbye from the crew, so as we touch down in a soaking wet Istanbul, I feel underwhelmed because I know how good Turkish Airlines can be. And on a five hour flight, I I expect more from them. The biggest difference could be made if they'd offer their long haul meal service, which there's obviously plenty of time for. If not, it would at least be nice to get some sort of pre landing gesture, like handing out a little box of two Turkish delights as a thank you, or just something like that to add an element of luxury. After my experience with the windows, I'm also a little hesitant to fly the Turkish 787 on a day flight again, since I sit in window seats for a reason to look out and record the beautiful scenery outside. Nonetheless, I'm looking forward to flying with them again because I know how good they can be on a good day. They're one of my favorite airlines for redeeming points after all, and I always get an insane rate on this route and many others by redeeming through Turkish Airlines' own program. This flight cost me around 17,000 points in business class, which is unbelievable. On that note, thank you so much for watching, guys, and until I see you all in the next video, fly safe.